So uh, her last match ever uh, happens for TNA. It's Karen and Jeff Jarrett uh, taking on uh, China and Kurt Angle. Uh, she would go back and forth uh, to Japan. She even becomes an English teacher there for a few years. I think the last time you saw her was Money at the Bank or uh, Money in the Bank. I think she watched the uh, the show with you. There's even a link for your YouTube, so we'll we'll throw some footage up there. Um, was that the last time you talked to her? Wasn't the last time I talked to her. It was the last time I saw her. So she was at the um, Eternal Con on Long Island, and I was told after the fact that um, she did not know how we I would would receive her. She was nervous about it. Um, she had been kind of incommunicado for a long time when she went to Japan, and I thought she was getting her life together. I did not know that there had been what seemed to be a suicide attempt mm. by rushing the police. Uh, police in Japan don't carry firearms. It might be part of the reason why uh, you know she was subdued uh, and she was told to go home. This is what I heard. Um, and so there is a moment, and I'm glad they captured it on the Vice, uh, on the on the Dark Side of the Ring documentary they did about her. I don't know if it was officially Dark Side of the Ring, but it was on Vice. And uh, oh, I'm looking at uh, Joni at our house, and you guys are free to use that footage. Um, so I see her, and we embraced, and I remember seeing that footage. Wow, I was having a tough time getting around with my hip at that time. Yeah. And I asked her if she wanted to come back to the house and watch the show with me. And I remember calling my wife on the way home. I said, uh, she goes, how did it go? I said, well, good. I said, hey, I'm bringing home a, a friend to watch the pay-per-view. And uh, she goes, who is it? I said, China. She goes, no, really? I said, oh, it's China. And, that, and there was no discussion. It was like, yeah, that's, China is our friend. We love her and our family. And uh, she came over, and you see the greeting, you know, with Noel and Joni. And I'm so glad, so glad we had that time that we spent together. Uh, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this, but um, when I was with Joni, I could see hundreds, what? several hundred uh, gig marks on her arm. So she had been self-harming, and it looked like she'd been doing that for a long time. And uh, you know, when I was a volunteer for Rain, I learned a lot about people who self-harm and how oftentimes uh, not only is there a release of endorphins, but it is the ability to control and not have a mastery over, but to be in control of a physical pain while which somehow soothes the uncontrollable emotional pain that someone does not have a handle over. And those were always the most difficult discussions I would have with visitors to the RAIN um, helpline help because the conversations would always go around in circles and it would always come back to the self-harming as the only solution. Um, and so I saw someone who was in uh, just an indescribable amount of pain or had been trying to go back and make a comeback. And I did, pl I pleaded with her when I saw the schedule. I thought, you're coming back. Now is the time to dip your toe in the shallow end. And the people in charge of her at that time had her taking a deep dive and uh, involving Opie and Anthony, and I really enjoyed being on that show, but uh, that wasn't the best place for her to be. I thought the idea of her showing up at WWE headquarters was foolish. I just, I just thought that this is not, this. they were asking her to take on too much in, Emotionally. in not looking out for her best interest. She did have a really good friend there uh, who was at our house. And he, I believe, runs her, her Twitter account. Um, personally, I don't want a Twitter account when I'm gone. And I've even had that in my, uh, you know, my will. <laughs> no, no, tell my kids individually, no, no. If you want to honor dad on your own accounts, that's fine. But I don't want any account with a blue check mark, you know, where you're saying, showing old footage. I'm, you know, that's personal decision, but it's just strange to me. And I think Joni's in the Hall of Fame. 
I think all these hashtags, you know, to get her in again on her own, it's like, she's in there. Yeah. Like, this is a compromised situation. And now she's getting she's getting a, a wonderful A&E documentary, from yes. what I understand. She's being acknowledged. She's being talked about. Her contributions have never been more recognized. It's so unfortunate. I mean, it's so tragic. And, it's, and from my own standpoint, I would probably get an email once a week from Joni mm. to, between the time she was at my house and the time she died. And almost 201, I was like, hey, listen, sorry, I don't have much time to respond, blah, 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 blah. It was always rushed. And the one time I was supposed to see her, she was supposed to be in an autograph signing, and she was supposed to be at the table with Noel, and Joni didn't make it because of issues. And so she was struggling until the end. She was really struggling until the end. I think the people, like I said, the same people who saw who put her on this schedule saw fit to do a memorial that was like a circus where you could get a better seat if you paid more money. It's like. No, 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 this is not the way you honor somebody. This is not the way you show your respect or admiration or love for somebody. This is everything you don't want happening uh, when we lose somebody. So I'm glad that the pendulum is swinging and hopefully it stays here where we say, this is a woman who made a major difference. Uh, th those two things, the strength contrasted with that vulnerability was what made her who she was, but it was also what... Uh, caused her to leave well before her time.